Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today we're going to make a modern version of Roman concrete called Corporal Crete. So stick around. Okay, today I want to do a video, a follow-up video, um, on the Roman concrete that I did about a month ago. This is not a part two, it's more of a follow-up. And it's in response to several uh, emails or PMs that I received from viewers or subscribers that were asking, well, how do I make this if I don't have access to a volcano? And I got thinking about that and I said, you know, the Roman concrete idea is cool, but yeah, they're right. Bottom line, if you don't have access to volcanic ash, pumice, volcanic rock, volcanic tuff, or limestone, you're not going to do this. So how can I make this the same way but using modern materials? So I went ahead and did some research. And during that research, I found that ancient Chinese, um, even the Romans, and over in India, they would substitute pot shards or terracotta and brick dust, sometimes with their volcanic ash. And what that did is it was a pozzolan or pozzolan, however you want to pronounce it. And a pozzolan is basically a binder material that is from silica or siliceous, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly, and a luminous material. And it possesses no cement properties at all, zero. However, once you combine that with calcium hydroxide and add water, it chemically reacts and it produces a binder just like cement. And that's what we did with the Roman concrete. We made lime crete or lime concrete, lime mortar. So we can do the exact same thing using modern materials. So armed with that knowledge, what I did is I thought, let's approach this from a prepper or crap hits the fan scenario. Um, most of us live in cities, towns, suburbia. Where do you find terracotta? Roofing tiles. All the light brown tiles you see is terracotta. Potted plants that are found in almost every single home. Terracotta. Red brick. That's found in almost every single city across the country. Especially back east, most of the buildings are made with red brick. So the last thing we need is limestone. I got thinking about that also. A lot of garden beds, there's white rocks, limestone. Those fake rock facades that you see on the sides of buildings are poured limestone in most cases. So once again, armed with that knowledge, I said to myself, we can do this right here with modern materials. So what you got coming up next is a voiceover material or footage, and we'll call it Corporal Crete. Enjoy. The first thing you have to do is determine whether or not you actually have limestone. So grab the rock in question and some vinegar, put a few drops on it, and if you see it bubble or fizz up, that's a good chance you have limestone. One good source of pure limestone is the ordinary seashell. Just grab a bucket full of these and superheat them inside of a foundry or a forge or ordinary campfire until you notice that the shell starts to crumble. Once the shells crumble, remove it from the fire, let it cool down, and then just add water. By superheating the shells or limestone, you've created calcium oxide. By adding water, you get an exothermic reaction where it produces heat becomes hydrated and becomes calcium hydroxide. If you listen close, you can hear a slight sizzling. That's not because the shell is hot, but it's because of the exothermic reaction that's taking place. If you watch closely, you notice the shells are becoming brittle, breaking apart and disintegrating and forming a paste.
At this point right here, we're moving towards our end result. We're trying to create calcium hydroxide. Currently, the calcium oxide is reacting with the water and producing an exothermic reaction where heat is generated. Just that small amount right there is producing well over 130 degrees. It's being cooked from the inside out. It's also drying out and will produce a fine white powder, which is calcium hydroxide, which you can store indefinitely. Another way to produce calcium oxide and ultimately calcium hydroxide is to grab ordinary limestone rocks. The more chalky in appearance, the better. Place them inside of a fire pit, foundry, or forge and superheat them for three to four hours until they glow red. After you've superheated your rocks for three to four hours, go ahead and remove them, let them cool down, and just like the seashells, add water. Notice how the rock is actually disintegrating and turning into a paste. Once again, exothermic reaction is taking place, and the calcium oxide is becoming hydrated, which ultimately becomes calcium hydroxide, one of the building blocks for your limecrete or concrete. Now right here we have a large scale experiment. I had a bunch of rocks and seashells. I crushed them up with a hammer and I put them into a bucket. I'm going to add water to this. Right now this is considered slaked lime. It's when you go ahead and take your calcium oxide, add water, it becomes calcium hydroxide through that exothermic reaction that we talked about. So this is called slaking your lime or slaked lime. There's my paste and almost immediately you're going to see steam coming off of this. Here are the sizzling. Watch close, you can see it crack apart. That's the exothermic reaction. And this one here is almost 200 degrees. Check this out. Once your calcium hydroxide cools down, it turns into a fluffy white powder. And you can keep adding to this, seal the bucket, and keep it indefinitely. Now that we have our calcium hydroxide ready to go, it's time to work on our binding material or our pozzolan that we talked about earlier. Right here we have terracotta. I'm going to crush it up with a hammer. I'm going to create fine, medium, and coarse material. The coarse material will be used as my aggregate in place of my rock. And then go ahead and do the exact same thing with the red brick. I'm going to go ahead and go with a one to one mix, meaning one pound to one pound. So it's one pound of calcium hydroxide, and then there's one pound of red brick dust and terracotta dust. Finally, we'll go ahead and add the water and then toss in our aggregates. And here's our end result. 
honestly, this is trial and error. So what I did is I went back to our previous video and I made this into a Play-Doh-like consistency. You can see how it's not sticking to my hands, but I'm still able to roll it around and cast a shape. And last but not least, I went ahead and filled my container. I did it in two layers, used my wooden tapping tool, and tapped it all the way around, made sure everything was packed in the corners, filled my second layer, and then I finished off the surface with a metal blade. And now for the million dollar question. How long do I leave it inside the form? This one right here I left for seven days. I stripped the form off and lo and behold, there you go, Corporal Crete. Now before we get out of here, I wanna go ahead and I wanna show you something. This was the first block or brick that I made out of the Roman concrete from our previous video. And when I go ahead and I hit it, hear that real dull thud. This resembles concrete. Concrete is thick, it's dense. It's got a dull thud when you hit it. Next we have the corporal crete. It's made the exact same way except for we substituted the volcanic ash for red brick dust and terracotta. When I tap on it, it's got a higher pitch, just like bricks and terracotta do. So in a sense, we can create our own bricks now, as well as concrete. Welcome back. A success or failure, you decide. I hope this helps answer questions as far as what can be used for volcanic ash substitutes. And in no way am I suggesting that you use any of these materials in place of modern concrete. However, just like last time, it's just my humble opinion. It may be beneficial in a crap hits the fan scenario to know how to make some sort of concrete or limecrete, as well as bricks or blocks. Thank you for your comments, views, support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the woods, have some fun, and I'll catch you next time.